Hello guys and welcome to TGN the Gaming Nerd the Shore. I talk about role play games and today we're going to be playing 9 hours, 9 persons, 9 doors. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we made our way through the... I forget exactly what the name of that room was, but we made our way through and we learned more about Seven's past, about who he was, and some of the freaky stuff that, assume, that presumably happened 9 years ago. So, without further ado, let's continue in the torture room. This name doesn't really inspire confidence with what we're going to be doing, so let's begin. So first thing we want to do is move over to the right here, grab this wrench. This wrench looks brand new. Considering where we found it, I have to wonder how it was used. Knock it off. I don't want to think about that. You've already seen plenty of things here that are a lot, that are a lot more cool than that. <laughs> you're, unexpe you're unexpectedly sensitive. Come on, let's not talk about stuff that doesn't matter, okay? We need to find it somewhere we can use this thing. Brand new wrench. Maybe I could use it to unscrew, bo unscrew bolts or something. We indeed are going to go ahead and use that. We're going to move to the left over here and unscrew this. The cover's bolted on there pretty good. Should be able to get these bolts off with this wrench we just found, though. Sweet, it's open. The hole's too small. You can't see in, even with the cover off. Well, you can't see in, but I think there's enough st room to stick your arm in. Are you sure you want to do that? There could be something dangerous in there. Okay, I admit that scares me a little, but we need to see if there's anything useful in there. Junpei's a bit of a scaredy cat in this uh, area here, but I don't really blame him. It's the torture room. There's presumably going to be a lot of torture. All right, here we go. Arm into the hole. Hey, I think I can feel something. It's small, cold, and hard. Doesn't feel like there's anything else in here. All right, let's see what what this thing is. The sun key. A key with the sun symbol on it. We should be able to open the other door with this. Yeah, but we gotta get out of this room before we can do that. Yeah, and we're probably gonna need the sun key to do that. But n none of the doors in this room have keels. I bet we're gonna use it on uh, something that's not a door. A key with the sun symbol on it. I don't think it goes to any of the doors in this room. Ah, uh, it does go to something else right over here uh you can't see it very well because the compression of you know both youtube and the ds uh but right here are restraints and if you look very very closely you'll see that there are very tiny keyholes here it's just the sudden key should fit into the keyhole on these machines all right sun key in you go and yes great they're open I don't think we're going to need the sun key again in here, though. Just seems unlikely. Alright, sun key, you've done your job. Into my pocket with you. <laughs> so wait, if into his pocket means not in his inventory, does that mean that when stuff is in his inventory, he's just carrying it all around? I mean, I guess in the third room, uh, Ju it, he does mention that he, uh, he's holding the bucket after June didn't want to hold it because it was too heavy. So I guess it's canon that in these games, like they don't put these items in their pocket, they just hold them all. So when you have a bunch of different uh, items in your inventory, just imagine your player character holding all of those different things. Anyways, we want to look at this chair again. Well, they're open. What are you going to do now? Let's just look around some more. I got a feeling that something will happen. Right. We should try and figure out what the device over there in the corner is for at any rate. Indeed we should. There's something on the screen. This device will conduct the experiment. Once the experiment has been completed, the door will unlock. First, adjust the switches to match the blocks in the sample above. Huh. I don't know what this thing is, but uh, we gotta figure out the puzzle. It's right next to a torture chair. Whatever it is, I don't think it's good. Anyway, let's just adjust the switches to match the blocks up on top, right? You adjust the switches shown at the four corners of the screen, then press the check button. Junpei, we don't know what this thing does. You can always come back to it later. There are lots of other things you could do. So in the uh, remake for this game, one thing that I don't like about the remake is that uh, for new players, you'll come to this puzzle and you'll just see what's on the bottom screen, so on the right here, and there'll be an extra button that says hint. And if you're playing this for the first time, you might think, oh, well, that's just like the hint button that'll like give me some clues. I don't need that. I want to solve the puzzle on my own. It is not a hint, it is a vital part of the puzzle. The hint button shows what's on the top screen. 
I and it's not a hint when you're missing information. That's just giving you the required information. That's like saying a tutorial is a hint. It's not. It's a tutorial showing you what you're supposed to do. Okay, so to solve this puzzle, go ahead and click on the top left one, the bottom left one, and the t bottom right one. There we go. Adjustment is completed. Now proceeding to execution phase. To complete the experiment, data must be used to collect must be used to collect from subject. Once preparation is finished, place subject in chair. Whoa, whoa, I thought we solved the puzzle already. What does it mean by preparation? I don't know. I've got a bad feeling about this. I think this means one of us has got to sit in the chair. Well, Seven's never going to fit in that thing. It's either you or me, Junpei. Collecting data. I wonder if it's going to run electricity through the subject. There's a human head on the screen. Maybe it's going to zap the brain with a little of electricity. This really doesn't sound safe. Anyway, we've still got to prepare. We can talk about this after we figured out what it means by preparation, alright? Well, it wants us to prepare, so maybe we ought to ask what we need to do. Mirror, the disposal tank is closed. Please fill the tank with water. What tank? Oh man, don't tell me we got to do something with a water tank. Well, there's probably something around here to open a tank or whatever it's asking us to do. Looks like the only controls are in this room. In fact, we can see those controls over here. Go ahead and pull this yellow lever. We have a red lever and a yellow lever, which reminds me of the classic tongue twister red leather, yellow leather. Gotta turn on. Of course they would. All they could do is turn something on or off. What's important is that they turn on or off. Don't say the floor is going to suddenly open up. I can see some oil or something down there at the base of the lever. Yeah, it feels like it's got some movement to it. Should be able to pull this one. Alright, let's pull the lever. Is that... water? What the hell? What's going on? Will you calm down? It's just water going somewhere. It sounds like it's underneath us. That means the floor... Oh! Junpei, look! What... what she... Oh, damn! I can see through the glass now. If we look through here... There's a shark beneath there. Totally not scary at all. But we get the letters E, D, B, and F. There are a couple of letters in the color of blood written on the shark's belly. It's dead. Looks like the letters are E, D, B, and F. Whatever these are for has to be in the room somewhere. I'm gonna go back to the controls over here and click the related buttons. And there are a bunch of buttons here with the letters A through F on them. Let's push some of them. Down you go. So if I press it again, back you come. I guess these buttons switch something on or off when you push them. E, D, B, F. What? There's a strange noise coming from the chair. It looks like it's been turned on. I guess the puzzle here was that power had to be sent to, in a specific way. Moving back over here, let's check this again. The restraining device is unlocked. Please seat subject in device. The message on the screen was disturbingly detached. Well, like we thought, it's not going to work unless someone sits in it. How ironic that this would be the situation in which this slim, beautiful body is useful. Lotus, are you sure? I can sit in it, and you can solve. Junpei's right. If we screw it up... Seven couldn't bring himself to finish the thought. His eyes fell to the floor. Junpei followed them. Beneath them was a dead shark floating underneath the glass. Perhaps it had been killed by an electric shock. I'll be fine. Even if I fall in, the shark is already dead. But... No one likes an indecisive man, Junpei. I can still give you advice from the chair, too, you know. I just don't want to stay in this room any longer than we have to. Go over to that screen, let's get this over with. After her words had made it clear that Lotus would book no argument, she turned and walked toward the chair without hesitation. But she did not sit down. Despite what she had said, she did indeed feel hesitation. Her legs shook. Look. Do you think you could do me one favor? Don't say last. You're making me nervous. Just listen. If something happens to me, I want you to tell my daughters that I love them very much. No. Tell them that I will always love them. 
daughters? You... you've got kids? Yes, I do. I suppose they're about your age, Junpei. They're twins. I had them when I was young after... after some things happened. Their names are Nona and... Wait! Nona! Junpei's words shot out before he even realized what he was saying. He remembered the story Seven had told him. Aoi Light and Nona. Those were their names. Well, some of them. The kids that were there. In the experiment, I mean. What the hell? What's wrong with you? Lotus took a step back from Junpei. Seven looked just as shocked as Junpei. He blinked his eyes rapidly as if he weren't sure if he, would com he was completely awake. No way. It couldn't. Lotus, is your last name Kashiwabara? Lotus's eyes went wide. How do you know that? Are you serious? What the hell is this? There's no way you're that kid's mom. That kid? What do you mean, that kid? Why are you acting like you've met her? Seven's brow furrowed. I have. What? Yeah, I... I met one of your kids. When? Nine years ago. Where? On this ship. Why were you... It's not a... Sh it's not a short story. I don't care how long it is. Tell me, please. What happened here? Seven glanced at Junpei, then turned back to Lotus and began to speak. It was the same story Junpei had heard only minutes before. Every detail. At last, Seven finished. Lotus shook her head. Oh my god! Everything I've been looking for the last nine years. The person who had all the answers was right here. Looking for... Yes, that's right. Nine years ago, my daughters disappeared. Then nine days later, they came back. They never told me what had happened to them over those nine days. I took them to the doctor, but I was told they hadn't be been hurt in any way. Still, I was sure that they had been through something terrible. So I couldn't bring myself to force them to talk about it. If I did, I'd force them to relive what horrors they'd been through. I didn't have any choice. I had to try to, to ignore it and move on. A few months passed. Gradually, they started to act like they always had before they disappeared. They smiled, they made jokes, and did all the silly things kids do. It got harder and harder for me to ask them about what happened. How could I ask them to remember that? Eventually, I knew there was no way I could do it. But I'm still a mother. I couldn't simply forget that something terrible had happened to my children. So I decided I would investigate what had happened on my own. I would find out what had happened during those nine missing days. What did you find out? Nothing. The police pretended to be concerned, but they didn't do anything. Once the 16 children who'd gone missing came back, things were just... swept under the rug. Even the media didn't talk about what had happened. I figured someone was probably paying or threatening them to keep their mouths shut. Cradle Pharmaceutical. Cradle, Cradle Pharmaceutical. No, probably something even bigger than that. Cradle Pharmaceutical. Have you heard of them before? No, that's the first I've heard of that name. Seven, how did you find that Cradle Pharmaceutical was connected to the kidnappings in the first place? I figured... I figured finding out whatever the victims had in common would lead me to the culprit. That's what any good cop does. What did they have in common? Every single one of the kids who disappeared had gone to this one hospital at some point. The hospital was one of a bunch that were under the control of Cradle Pharmaceutical. After that, it was just about connecting the, the dots. The hospital. The hospital. For a while, I was trying to get some kind of story out of the kids at the hospital. One of them told a weird story. What was it? Have you ever heard about the Gonsfeld experiment? I guess all these kids had to go through while they were at the hospital. I think it was passed off as some sort of counseling. Seven cleared his throat and proceeded to explain the Gonsfeld experiment. First, subjects Q and A are put into separate rooms far away from one another. Then a series of video images are shown to subject Q, who is told to send the images to subject A by thinking about them. Subject A, on the other hand, is put in a large reclining chair and given a blindfold. With their senses cut off, A is asked to guess what image Q is looking at. Oh yes, I've heard of that. It's a famous telepathy experiment, isn't it? 
Telepathy. Telepathy. Junpei rolled the word over in his mind. That's how the experiment on the ship was supposed to work. The experiment to control people, right? Yeah. I don't know if any of the telepathy stuff really exists, but maybe someone from Cradle Pharmaceutical brought it, bought into it. Hmm. Lotus grunted. Seven had been thinking hard for the last several minutes and finally spoke. Even if that is the case, I still don't get out that it has anything to do with this. The nonary game, Zero, why we were kidnapped, what does any of that have to do with telepathy? I know I've brought all this up, but uh, I have no idea. Maybe none of this stuff is connected after all. Then, in that moment of silence, a cold voice echoed from down from the ceiling. No subject has been detected. Unless a subject is detected within 60 seconds, all power will be shut down. System recovery is estimated to take one hour. If you wish to proceed with the experiment, please seat subject, su please seat subject in the restraining device. Whoa, that doesn't sound good. Yeah. Okay, I'm going, I'm going. Oh no, that's not what we... Just hurry up and get it over with. Yunpei, I'm counting on you. R right. Lotus sat down on the chair. Junpei looked at her one last time, then made his way to the monitor. Lotus, please tell me right away if anything- if you feel anything... weird. You worry too much. Now get on with it and be a man, or June's going to leave you. Lotus was putting on the best act she could manage, but her legs were shake, shaking so much that if she hadn't been sitting, she likely would have fallen down. Failure was not acceptable. Junpei took one last deep breath and stared at the monitor. Whew. A lot of crazy stuff happening in these last few episodes. Now, we have to look through this puzzle. Alright, that's it. Uh, so, it's hard to explain this. On the left side of the head, put everything on one. And on the right side of the head, put everything on two. And that'll pretty much do exactly what it says on the top screen. Very nice. The experiment has concluded. The door will now unlock. I can hear a door unlocking. Now we've got a new message. Release subject from restraining device. Lotus, uh, are you alright? Yes, I am. I'm glad nothing bad happened, but I do think my life just got a little shorter. Hold on, I'll get you out right away. Shouldn't take too long for Seven and me to get her out of there. Let's get out of here now. Being a guinea pig is not for me. Damn straight. I don't ever want to see this thing again. And with that, we can finally leave. And with that, we are going to end off this episode. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye!